guys? You know, weird is a sort of weird word that can either attract or repel, depending on your point of view. Well, it's definitely a point of attraction for the band that we're about to talk to today. A DIY duo known as High Places. Weird is the word that they use more than any other to describe the sound they've been fashioning over the last couple of years. A dreamy, noisy, kitchen sink sort of pop psychedelia that completely sucks you in. Well, she is from Michigan, he is from Philadelphia, but as is so often the case, all roads have led here to Brooklyn. We're about to talk to Rob and Mary from High Places. <laughs> Well, guys, it's good to see you, and thanks for letting us sort of invade invade your space. Looking forward to the release of the first full length. Is it is it an exciting time? Is it a little bit? Well, this is not a place we've really gone before, and uh, a little. I I think it's funny because we've only put out seven inches, and uh, you know splits, and you know a couple comp tracks, and just kind of put out everything kind of more homespun and small and short form. So it's kind of it was a little bit scary for us to make a full length album because like I said from like bef from, like other people I've at, talked to about this it's like there's a lot of good punk seven inches but there's not so many good punk LPs at least in my opinion right. and I guess our songs are short so I guess I kind of like had that in the back of my head like how to make a good album um, flow so we made sure it wasn't too long mm -hmm. but I guess as far as it coming out <clears throat> we've like we kind of just like have been playing the, a lot of the songs and, like for two months and also recording it and writing it like the sort month of back before and that. Forth, playing and recording. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit of overlap, and so I guess it, it's hard to be objective about how we feel about it right now. Like we hear it, and it just sounds like you know white noise because we can't tell if we like it or not. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, I like it better live. Like when I hear the songs live. Right. So, so I don't know. We haven't really gone there yet. It's a new experience. You know? Whereas the way you worked before. If you were only concerned with a seven inch, it wasn't it wasn't sort of like as as daunting as you say as have, having to compile twelve tracks or something, right? Yeah, I think we forget too when we have to give someone a deadline or something, just how long it takes and how many layers we have. Because we'll have basically all the com components to a song minus maybe like the vocals and like a bass beat or something, but it's just putting it all together. It can be like the most tedious thing, and we use a really archaic program that does nothing for you. An so, older program? It's like yeah. 12 years old. Wow. And yeah. there's like a lot of math involved. Like for each echo, you have to like figure out like how you're going to divide up the beat like numerically. Because it's an older program, it takes yeah. all that? Yeah. Yeah. Which we, l we like. I mean, it's kind of limiting, but the, it's fun how it limits you kind of. It makes you more creative. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we have I to figure something out. I guess it's a computer version of lo fi in a sense. It really does nothing. All it does is capture sound. It's literally just like text edit or something. All you can do is cut and paste things, really. It doesn't mm -hmm. really do much. And it's like building a website with HTML these days. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's wow. Which it, I do, too. Yeah. I think I just like doing things the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, you don't rely on technology. It's essentially like whatever, it doesn't even EQ. So like whatever we, rec whatever the mic picks up and how it picks it up and, you know, if we record really far, you know, we'll put the mic over there and then record over here. Like that sound of the room, everything that gets trapped in there, we just kind of work with that because we feel like that's what makes it kind of is it just feels it's not a limitation to us it's just more like truthful in a way of it's like yes that's the sound so I mean uh, there's a little bit of manipulation but for the most part it just it does get crazy because like a lot of the like she was saying there's so many layers like like a lot of the things that people hear melodically in there like I don't know if they're recognizable to people but if, if you know there's guitar and songs but this it'll be like maybe you know Ten guitar tracks, and some of them are slowed way down. Some of them are sped up. Some are backwards. You know, some of the songs have like six different percussion tracks going on that we just keep mm -hmm. adding on top of that. So, <coughs> so, what about some of those Nat sounds you were talking about before? How many on a, on a given song? How many different elements would there be? Well, uh -huh. it depends because we'll we'll get a little bit of noise on each recording. You know, uh -huh. like room noise or uh -huh. traffic noise, and. You can only have so many tracks with like weird noise going on before like your head starts hurting, right. you know. Right. So every now and then we have to do something with like a, a line in more directly, mm -hmm. and and so we do occasionally use electronic sounds. Yeah, like we'll try. We we'll use drum machines mostly. Like what we'll do is we'll like be like, okay, like the thump in this song was like, you know, like us like kicking the side of that metal desk or something. It was mm -hmm. be like, but it's like noisy, 
and it has a good ambient, not ambient, but just good whatever acoustical about acoustical acoustic value <laughs> around it. But it's not tight. So when we How like how many tracks do you think we usually have? So we'll put like a bass drum from like a kick drum. I mean from like a drum machine or something, and it just like solidify it. <coughs> you know, so it actually has like coherence or whatever. How many tracks what? I think probably like eight to twenty or something different instruments at a time. Yeah, I mean it could. We've had up to like. But we have to const it's kind of like the way the recording program that we use works, it's almost like four tracking because it freezes. Since it's an old program, it'll freeze if it gets over like 150 megabytes. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't like cache the memory like the way modern programs do. Mm -hmm. And so like we have to constantly keep bouncing down tracks. So we'll get to like five tracks and then it starts acting funny and we have to mix that down. So it's kind of like... We're I mean, really stubborn for using this program. It's really... It, yeah. it sounds difficult. Make, we're making <laughs> it sound even worse. Now I'm really thinking about, like, why do we use this program? Again? Because there, I don't think there's a good substitute. I mean, it, it allows you to be so finite in what you cut and paste and place in places that I, don't, I haven't seen it in another program. And I think that's what I like about it. But it is kind of what we're talking about, a variation on the conversation I've had with some quote-unquote lo-fi bands earlier this year, you know, about the question of whether or not some of those things, those sounds are, you know, choices, artistic choices, or they're the function of not being able to necessarily have state of the art everything. Well, it's, it's econ I mean, economically right. speaking, it's important. I mean, like I said. I just don't like how, how stuff sounds and it's super sleek. Mm -hmm. I think it loses something and you, you start feeling, I mean, it, it can get almost Muzak y or something. Where it, I mean, the thing about Muzak is it sounds so horrible because everything is really precise. Mm -hmm. And to us, you know, we, we don't want robots making music. It just wouldn't sound that great. It's hard to connect to. Mm -hmm. So with us, I think our music has always really been, we've tried to make it like as sincere and just honest as we can without, like, hopefully people don't like want to puke when they hear it because it's so honest or something. But like, the, there's a human element involved. We, yeah, I mean, we like, we really like field recordings and I'm really into like, you know, a while back, I remember being like feeling like somewhat limited by like money and having an old computer. And, and I read this book by Mickey Hart from the Grateful Dead. It was about like sound collectors over his, the history of sound collecting with, you know, basically guys that went to different <coughs> parts of the country and the world and rural places and recorded people. And they used those like tin can mics and, and just a lot of that stuff just like. It's just like um, the immediacy of it, and like coming from like punk rock backgrounds, like the immediacy of like bands recording in their garage, and like it, it, I mean, it, it, you could it's hypothetically lo-fi what we do, but I feel like it's also I'm not I don't mean this to sound like talking it up. It's like the amount of layers is actually super elaborate. Mm -hmm. So I it, yeah labor intensive lo-fi. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's kind of like yeah, it's like it's lo-fi in the sense that we record field recordings and then do kind of like hyper organization of those field recordings right. in the pop songs. I don't know if that makes sense. So I feel like we're getting better at recording. Like I feel like our demo, like our six song demo was like, sounded like it was like you had a carpet over your head when you were listening to it. But I feel mm -hmm. like the newer stuff hopefully is a little bit clearer. <laughs> Thank you.